Hey, what's going on guys? Mike Glover here, Fieldcraft Survival. I'm at my local sportsman's warehouse and I'm gonna take you on a small tour to navigate with my friend Tess, the best pistol for you. So come along. All right guys, I'm with Tess and Tyler in Sportsman's Warehouse in Heber City, Utah. They're homeboys. We're like 100 yards from here. I could throw a rock and hit our shop. One of the things that I wanna do with Tess is figure out navigating with Tyler the best self-defense solution for her because there's a lot of variables that a lot of people don't pay attention to. We often think like compact is the best version of concealable carry because it's smaller. Smaller equals better in concealed carry, but that's not always the case. The first thing I would ask is, uh, Tess, hold your hand up to my hand. Okay, about normal hands for uh, the average size pistol that's subcompact or compact. Uh, if I did the same thing with Tyler, like me and Tyler have the same size hands and he's like 6'10". So a different consideration for him. One of the things that I look at is overall size of hands, but also the length of fingers. All that's telling me a story about how she can control both muzzle flip, which is the barrel going up, and manage potential recoil. I mean, if she had a huge palm and small fingers, that would be a difficult gun to navigate. I want her to be able to be confident because the smaller the gun, the more that gun's gonna muzzle flip aggressively because it's compact, it's small. So with that being said, Tyler, can I start off with a Glock 17? Can we do a Glock 17? So the reason I asked for a Glock 17 is because a Glock 17, which is chambered a nine millimeter, is a full size, considered a full size pistol. Both the Glock 17 and Glock 22 are the same frame size, and I wanna see how that works in her hands. Awesome, thank you. So the people at Sportsman's Warehouse are really good about safety. Even though these are unloaded guns, remember safety first. Try to do a three-point check inside the chamber, inside the magwell and on the bolt face as per the SOP. All right, so the big thing is I have a full-size pistol. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand it to Tess in her dominant hand, and I wanna look at her fingers and how they wrap around the frame. So go ahead and grab it. Good, turn it sideways. All right, so one of the things I look for is how much real estate can she grab of this frame by putting her hand all the way around? As you can see, even with her hand completely around the back strap of this frame, they're not really engulfing it. Like if I took it myself and did this, you would see a lot more hand on the actual frame itself. So that for me would be potentially a problem. A lot of the grip comes from her support hand on the side of the frame. So if I position her hand here, a lot of what she's gonna manage in both muzzle flip and recoil is gonna be from the support hand, but I don't want her to be overwhelmed by the size of the frame. A lot of people who are using Glocks that are not Gen 5 who have the adjustable back strap are overwhelmed, and it's a lot, because this is a longer slide. It's got a, uh, a spring and guide rod that are gonna reciprocate the slide, and it's gonna kick this thing up. So I need to find the balance. Too small, not good. Too big, not good. That was a little overwhelming because it's just a little too much pistol. Let's see if we can strike the balance. Let's see if we can go to a Sig Sauer 365 and see where we're at. All right, so we got the 365 by Sig Sauer, considered a compact pistol for everyday carry. One of the reasons I like this over the Glock platforms is how thin it is. It's only an inch thick. That means it's going to be pressed against my body closer, better in concealment, and not as cumbersome to carry as a Glock 17, which is a lot wider. So I'll put this in her dominant hand, and immediately, you know, there's a big difference here, right? There's a big difference. The difference is when I take her support hand, she's going to be able to manage this properly, right? So that is good. But one of the problems that you'll find in compact pistols, especially with the slide forward, is this is a very short barrel. It's going to kick a little bit more, but that's the benefit of having a smaller frame. Now, one of the things that you'll notice right off the bat when I remove her support hand is her fingers align with this frame perfectly. She doesn't need the additional magazine or magwell that adds the additional base plate that gives her a little bit more real estate with her hands. But if I take the same pistol and put it in my hand, oh yeah, we lost that. So I would need the extension. So again, if we're working with this pistol and I'm using this, it's a little bit too small for my big hand. So I'm gonna to go to the 365 XL. But what I would say for Tess, 
this is the perfect size pistol for her and perfect caliber that we're gonna go into. Let me ask you this, just talking about concealed carry, where would you most likely carry a pistol on your person, on your body? On my body? Yeah. Probably here. Okay, are you uh, um, right hand dominant? Yes. Okay, so. So it would be on this side. Yeah, so it would be on your, on your yeah, waist side. But, but on you're saying waist. your waist. waist. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing I would recommend, especially for women, um, is to carry appendix. Like I'm carrying appendix right now. I'm actually carrying a SIG 320X carry, which is here. Um, but as it's positioned, I'm not giving away by printing because it's on the side of my body. Uh, Tess is very slim, so any extension of her body, you would see that as a signature. Now, a lot of people haven't migrated to appendix carry because they're focused on where their hand would be, their dominant hand would be for the draw stroke. Uh, in special operations for over a decade, I carried on the right side of my body. But if you're a civilian wearing a t-shirt, you might want to do something like appendix and just adjust it here center line. Uh, we have holsters at Fieldcraft Survival. They have good holsters here made by Crossbreed at Sportsman's Warehouse, but I would recommend that. Let me ask you another question. Would you use the same pistol for carry as the same pistol for home defense? No. Why? Because I need a smaller one to hide, but mm. I can use a larger for home. Absolutely. Like common sense stuff, guys. She just said it, the smaller one is the concealable one, which is, which is accurate. A lot of people default to one pistol for one solution. Your everyday carry consideration, I have many because I wear different clothes in different uh, conditions, whether it's you know a, a snow setup where we're hunting in the middle of Alaska or we're sitting here in Heber City when it's 90 degrees, that's very different than your home defense scenario. I would run a, a full size, can you hand me Tyler the uh, Mark, uh, this is the Mark 17 and the Mark uh, 18, hand me the Mark 17. The last thing I want to show you guys is the Mark 17 because we're talking about a full-size pistol with a Picatinny rail, rail that's capable of carrying a light and all the accessories you need to be successful for home defense. What I love about uh, this pistol is you can see this pistol right here, the distance between here and here is a lot thinner. The real estate is a lot thinner for people with smaller hands. It also has an aggressive beaver tail to allow her to acquire a secure grip with a taller frame that allows her support hand when it's riding up on the gun to be able to support the pistol because this is a large pistol but like she said perfect for home defense i have a picatinny rail here that allows me to attach uh, a surefire light and i have the ability with this adapter to remove this adapter to put a red dot optic which is going to benefit her especially under stress in a self-protection scenario cool Awesome. And the, the, the last added benefit of a full-size pistol is obviously magazine capacity. I have 21 rounds in this full magazine. I would not likely want to carry 21 rounds in an everyday carry configuration, but all day long in home defense. All day long in home defense. Tess, do you have any questions? Yeah, what's the recommended caliber for everyday carry? Yeah, that's a good question. So when we look at uh, home defense versus everyday carry considerations, we wanna look at what's the ability of that round and muzzle velocity that's measured in feet per second, this gets down a rabbit hole, foot pounds of energy, but overall size, because that means less magazine capacity with a larger round. So you're not gonna carry around a 10 mil hand cannon in your waistband. Nine mil for me is the perfect caliber for everyday carry. Uh, back in the day, 45 ACP used to be the solution because it had good terminal ballistic effects on target. Now with nine millimeter synthetic bonded self-defense ammunition, we don't have those issues. And we can get a larger magazine capacity with these magazines with a nine mil. Now if it's home defense, maybe 40 cal, maybe 45 ACP, depending on the structure of your home, but nine mil is the recommendation. And I prefer full metal jacket for all my rounds. You can get synthetic bonded ammunition, but you have to look at the specifics but full metal jacket is gonna do the job mostly because we're in and around objects, obstacles, all around our areas of operation, where we live, where we pump gas, where we work. So nine mil full metal jacket is the recommended caliber ammunition. Guys, Sportsman's Warehouse is a partner of Fieldcraft Survival. They've been doing a lot of good stuff with us. We have a lot of content planned for the future. If you're interested, make sure you follow all of Sportsman stuff. They are a hometown business for us that are scattered all through the United States. 
visit and frequent your local Sportsman's Warehouse for all the expertise. Until next time, peace out.